Bef before we get started, uh, I'd like to just run over a couple of rules with our audio for the council. Uh, if you take your, your clip microphones like I have it, please when you get up and speak, would you clip your microphone either on your tie, your jacket, wherever. Uh, it certainly will help because the people out there, are, a lot of times they're saying they cannot hear us. Center the microphone as close as you can as to your mouth, and then do not hold your microphone in your hands. I know we all have a habit of getting up and speaking, or like, they can't hear you. So if you'd please clip it to your, either your jacket, shirt, tie, wherever, close you can to your mouth so everyone can hear you. Uh, we'd appreciate it, and it will make it a lot easier for our listeners. One other thing, Alderman Moody called me today. She is in Memorial Hospital. She had a gallbladder operation this morning. She's doing very well. I spoke to her this afternoon. She'll probably go home tomorrow. So if uh, anyone would like to give her a call, she's in Memorial Hospital in room 275, and she'll be there till probably after lunch tomorrow. She'll be going home. But she is doing well, so everybody knows. All right. Notice of the first regular meeting of the 2004-2005 Common Council. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Solomon? Here. Bird? Here. Tony? Here. Serta? Here. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Perez? Here. Peterson? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Excused. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Fifteen present. Quorum's present. Uh, Alderman Reinflesch leading us in a pledge this evening. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Excuse me a moment. Would everyone please stand again? I'd like to uh, acknowledge our men and women who are in us. Uh, in the armed services for defending our country this evening who have lost their life in a moment of silence. Thank you. <coughs> This evening, uh, we will have the invocation by Pastor Alan Kretschmer of St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Pastor? Good evening. Thank you to uh, Alderman Warner for asking me to do this this evening. Mayor, uh, good to be with you uh, this evening on the first night of your uh, new session. In Romans chapter 13, the Apostle Paul refers to the governing authorities as God's servant to do good for the citizenry. Certainly the citizenry in general, his intent was of course to remind Christians of the benefit of government. Uh, in specific, it's a wonderful thing. It provides for safety, security, a certain quality of life, and therefore is a commendable and laudable service. And I certainly commend all of you for the work that you do in behalf of we the citizens of Sheboygan. Uh, in providing and maintaining a, a high level of quality of life that we certainly do enjoy as citizens in this community. Thank you very much. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have been gracious and good to us in so many wonderful ways. Certainly this task of serving the people of this community is a challenging thing. You show us that you understand what it is to face challenge in the gift of your son Jesus who died to pay for the sins of this world that all who believe in him are now saved. 
We thank you for the efforts of these individuals here this evening and the task that they do in bringing about a better quality of life in this community. <clears throat> Grant them your wisdom, your guidance, your strength to face the difficult decisions, and the ability to carry out all these things for the good of our citizens in this community. On this evening, we also ask your blessings in an extended fashion for all of those who yet serve our country in other places. Keep them in your care and allow them the, the opportunity to return home soon. We also thank you for the successful surgery this day for Alderman Moody and ask your continued blessings upon her as well. Be with all of us in the various tasks you have given us in this life, granting us your blessing for the goodness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. <coughs> Pat? Okay, the newly elected all persons elect, please come up here. <coughs> Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Is my mic on? Yes. I move that we adopt the rules of the Common Council. Can you read what it says? Uh, it doesn't say anything, Pat. That's the rules why. that governed the preceding council. It's on that sheet I gave you. Where is it? There you go where it says election of president. Show me where. Do you see it? It's on the first page. I was looking at the highlighted one. <laughs> and looking at here, rules of government, I know we were doing the other one, and I apologize. Uh, I would make a motion uh, that the rules which govern the preceding council be accepted as the rules of this common council. That's it. We have a motion before us and seconded. There's another discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Election of president. And Vice President. Nominations? <coughs> Alderman Groff? No, oh, no. Nope. Alderman Warner first. Excuse me, Alderman Warner. That's right. Now you highlighted part. On that, I would make a motion that nominations be received from the floor, voting be done by closed ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate rece receives a majority. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Now, Alderman Groff, I said? 
First book, yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would, um, Your Honor, and members of, of the 2004-2005 Common Council, I place before you the name of Alderperson Michael Warner from the 7th District, the 13th and 14th Wards, and I place that into nomination for President of the Sheboygan Common Council. Alderman Warner was first elected to the Council in the spring of 1999, I believe. Um, he, has, he has served on a majority of our standing committees and was appointed to chairperson of the Public Protection and Safety Committee, a position which he has held for the last three years. Um, last year, he served as committee of the whole chairperson as well as vice president of the Common Council. Uh, with some fine tuning and your help, I'm confident he will do a good job as council president. Okay. Is there any, are there any other nominations? Alderman Montemayor? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to nominate Eric Rinfleisch for president of the council. I think some, he's a young person with lots of young blood and lots of fire, and I think he could do a good job for us. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Alderman Groff? I would move that nominations be closed. Move to second that nominations be closed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Okay. sheet that you're giving out has a place for your signature because we said we we're doing a closed ballot you do not put your signature on there you only put your vote for whom you want to cast Vice President, Alderman Montemayor. Ah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Another nomination. I would like to nominate uh, Richard Manny for Vice President of the Council. Strong, upstanding, decent, fair, straight as an arrow man. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other, other nominations? Alderman Warner. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. I would like to alder, uh, nominate Alderman Bill Steppen as Vice President of the Council. It is my pleasure to nominate Alderman Stephan uh, because he has been an active and contributing member of this Council, as we all have, and is serving in his second term. 
Bill's wealth of experience having been a county board supervisor, as well as serving on many committees on this council, his common sense and leadership abilities are second to none, and, and he will perform his duties with dignity. Alderman Stefan will make a very good vice president of this common council. Are there any, Alderman Berg? No. Jessica? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Alderman Gruff? I would move that nominations be closed. Move to second, nominations be closed. Any discussion? Not all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. It's good to see all our protective service guys up here tonight. Thank you for coming. Stefan. Okay. Now we need another motion. Next page. We need a motion on the second page, Pardon? top. On the second page. All right, I would make a motion that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. We have a motion before us in a second, and this is for election of City Plan Commission. Representative Board of Contractors, Examiners, and two Representative Capital Improvements Commission. So we'll start with Plan Commission. Alderman Bonet. Uh, yes, Mr. Honor. I'd like to nominate Mike Warner for the City Plan Commission. He has a wealth of experience. He's been a pivotal component and a, a pillar of this Common Council, and he has experience with the City Plan Commission from yesterday, last year, which will bring uh, fluid motion between that year and this year with those actions. Thank you. Do we have any other nominations? Any other nominations? Alder McGrath. I would move that a unanimous ballot be, or that the nominations be closed and a unanimous ballot be cast for Alderman uh, Warner for our representative on the City Plan Commission. Second. Motion before us. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 
Congratulations, Alderman Warner. Okay, we need a representative to the Board of Contractors Examiners. Alderman Bonet. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Honor. I'd like to nominate Bonnie Serta for this position. She brings a new and energetic uh, component to our Common Council, and this is something I feel that she'd be very interested in. We have a motion before us. In this, oh. Are there any other nominations? Excuse me. Are there any other, other nominations for the Board of Contractors Examiners? Any other nominations? Hearing none? Alderman, we'll go ahead, Alderman Groff. Your Honor, I would move that nominations be closed and we cast a, a unanimous ballot for Bonnie Serta for our representative, representative on the Board of Contractors Examining. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, Bonnie. Okay, and we move down. Now we have two representatives on Capital Improvements Commission. Nominations, Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. I would nominate Anthony Benet for the Capital Improvements Commission. Anthony will look after the best interests of the city on the commission. His fiscal conservative nature will ensure that the commission makes the best choices for our capital improvements program. And I know Alderman Benet will be a very valuable member of the commission. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Are we doing both at the same time or one? one you can do time? both at the same time. Both at the same time. Uh, thank you. I would like to nominate Alderman Rindfleisch to, uh, for the position of uh, Capital Improvements Commission. Okay. Are there any other, other nominations? Hang on, guys. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would also like to nominate Alderman Bill Wangerman as a council representative on the, Cap on the Capital Improvements Commission. Alderman Wangerman has a lot of experience as a former city employee and will be able to weed through all the demands and propositions that the commission will look at. Having been on both sides of the fence, employee and overseer, I believe Bill understands the process and recognizes the needs of the city. Alderman Wangerman will serve us well on the Capital Improvements Commission and I hope we can support that. Are there any other nominations? Alderman Perez. Thank you, Honor. After all that, you made uh, Alderman Warner sound really great. I think he is. But I think we've got a young gentleman here, Alderman Rinfleisch, who also has a wealth of experience in, uh, in, in finances, and he has a wealth of experience and in, 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 in very articulate. And I would hope that this council will provide, uh, allow us to provide new leadership. Uh, Alderman Wagaman, by all means, is very qualified, but I think that we need to give other aldermen an opportunity to provide new leadership. So I would ask that all the aldermen uh, elect and, and vote for Alderman Rinfleisch. Are there any other nominations? If not, Alderman Groff? No, we have no? three candidates. Okay, three candidates, go. <clears throat> this form you'll have, you'll put your signature at the top line and there are two lines for who you want to vote for. So put your two choices. Oh, you don't need that many?
Pone 11, Wen Tai 6, Wangaman 13. So, Pone and Wangaman. Congratulations, gentlemen. Okay, now, Pat, you and I recess to, well, the council uh, will elect the committee of the whole chairman, correct? Okay. Alderman Warner. Uh, good evening. On that, I would call the council to order and entertain a, uh, a motion from the floor to ballot for uh, chairman of the committee of the whole. All right. Uh, as your president, I do have a nomination I'd like to make. Uh, anyone else can chime in after that. First, I would nominate Alderman Dan Berg as chairman of the committee of the whole. Alderman Berg is serving his second term on the council and is also a county board supervisor. I think Dan's experience as an alderman and county supervisor will serve him well as committee of the whole chairman. Having worked with Dan on building use on the building use committee, I find his insight um, really worthwhile and, and his let's get it done attitude and spirit something that's been very valuable. Dan is never afraid to share his opinion and will serve well as chairman of the committee of the whole and I think he'll do a great job. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to nominate Juan Perez for the position. Juan is well experienced. His passion is for openness, communication, and uh, in that uh, vein, I think he would serve quite well. Thank you. Thank you. I have a motion and a second uh, for Alderman Perez as chairman of the committee of the whole. On that, we will uh, pass the balance out, Steve. Are there any other nominations for chairman of the committee of the whole? On that, Alderman Groff. I'll make a motion that we close the nomination. Second. All in favor? Aye. Approval votes aye. Motion passes. Yes. Actually, the sign is. Uh, you're holding the bird. Don't worry, right there, right here. Put Berg in there.
The results are ten Berg, five Perez. Alderman Berg is our new chairman of the committee of the whole. Yes. Alderman Warner. <coughs> Alderman Warner. Just the results. Oh, okay. Your Just Honor? results. Just the results of the committee of whole. The results of the committee of whole is that Alderman Berg was elected by a vote of ten uh, to Alderman Juan Perez, who had five. Congratulations, Alderman Berg. Okay. Now it's my turn. Works pretty nice. Now I'm as tall as Pastor Pastor Kretschmer was when he stand up here. He left. Good evening, <coughs> Common Council members, Steve, Pat, department heads, Pastor Kretschmer, and guests who are joining us this evening for a first meeting of 2004-2005 Common Council. I consider it an honor and a privilege to stand before you tonight to deliver my eighth State of the City address. Over the past several years, we have seen a community hard at work, shaping its future, making an incredible amount of progress. Consider what we have seen recently, the north side and south side development projects, which are anchored by new Piggly Wiggly stores, the QD expansion, the Nemshoff office building, the Rockline expansion, new restaurants and clubs, the Water Street project, the hospital and medical building construction along Taylor Drive, the John Michael Kohler Art Center, restoration of the Stephanie Wild Center, and the spectacular and exciting Blue Harbor Resort and Con Conference Center, which will open in the near future. We have challenged ourselves to meet the tight fiscal restraints brought about by a state budget crisis and have been invigorated by local efforts to keep our community safe and combat drugs in our neighborhoods. One fact is certain, Sheboygan works. Sheboygan works to preserve our traditions, to make each day better than the previous, and to assure a bright future for our families. We put our best efforts forward and achieve our greatest successes by uniting behind our strengths. Success will never be achieved by focusing on our weaknesses, but rather by seeing them as challenges that call us together. Sheboygan works. We work hard, we work smart, and most importantly, we work together. Over the next year and into the future, we will be called upon to answer many challenges. Each and every time in the past year when we needed to put forth ideas and to take action, we have led. Those who would suggest our successes are a mistake or mishandling of our duties as elected officials fail to understand that leaders build upon a common vision, common values, and common sense. Failure is not an option, and indecision never a course of action. Our journey is one of excellence and opportunity, and I stand before you tonight eager and proud to lead the way. One early opportunity to work together will involve the shaping of our 2005 city budget. The budget we put together in 2004 was one of shared sacrifice, a commitment to our future, and the realization that common desires overshadow individual wishes. 
The budget I proposed in 2004 to this body included a 0% increase in the city's tax rate. And through your hard work and efforts, <coughs> the final budget included an increase of one cent. Again, this year our state shared revenues will be stagnant at best, and there will have to be sacrifices in programs and services. I will urge the Strategic Fiscal Plan Committee to begin its budget work very early to establish service priorities. To assist them in their deliberations, last fall, I appointed a Quality of Life Service Committee made up of local business and civic leaders whose task was to review the services our city provides. It is my desire and hope that their initiatives, which include prioritizing essential services and sharing common resources, will be thoroughly reviewed and considered during budget deliberations. Together, we all face the challenge of health care costs that seem to continually spiral out of control. While efforts have been undertaken at the federal and state levels to curb the cost of prescription drug costs, to ensure that Sheboygan works to provide affordable health care for its residents, I propose the creation of a local symposium of business, civic, government, and labor leaders to explore initiatives in both the private and public sectors to help reduce the burden of medical insurance costs on our business community and our local government. I strongly feel that this public-private partnership to review a shared problem will be very beneficial. Last year, I urged this body to immediately address two major projects was faced, which faced our community. Construction of a new police facility and the Great Lakes development. I am pleased with the action of the council committee and the results. After years of hard work, a decision and agreement has been reached to build our new police facility a property owned by the county board. I applaud both this body and the county board for working together for the betterment of our community. The choice of North 23rd Street location shows that through cooperation we are working smarter and are able to plan for our future public safety needs. While shared services are often discussed and often difficult to implement, the construction of a law enforcement facility and this site will lead to immediate sharing of city and county law enforcement services. Furthermore, our local law enforcement officials who are charged with the duties of protecting our neighborhoods, playgrounds, and streets will have a facility conducive to the very critical tasks they perform. Each time our officers put on their uniforms, they make a commitment to protect our community. It is time the community they serve and protect makes a commitment to providing them with the resources necessary to do their jobs. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for that. I would be remiss, remiss if I did not give special recognition to a Sheboygan police officer who has worked tirelessly in our, in our efforts to eliminate illegal drug traffic in Sheboygan. Officer Todd Preby works in the community policing unit for the Sheboygan Police Department and has been part of several efforts to improve neighborhoods. Todd is currently involved in a project he developed called Neighborhoods Against Drugs, NAD. Although this project is less than a year old, it already has several victories in forcing de drug dealers out of neighborhoods and is currently showing results in other neighborhoods. Todd's effort and enthusiasm and those of all the NAD volunteers are clearly sending a message that illegal drugs will not be tolerated in our community. I congratulate Todd, who recently received the Sheboygan Elks Distinguished Citizenship Award for his NAD program, and all the NAD volunteers who have worked with him to make this program so successful. Is Todd here this evening? Todd, would you please stand up? On June 1, 2004, the most significant project ever undertaken in our community will open its doors. Thanks to a community that works to get, thanks to a community that works together, 
to make a dream come, become reality, the Blue Harbor Resort and Convention Center will promote Sheboygan as a regional waterfront destination and build upon Sheboygan's maritime identity. An enormous amount of time, energy, local and private financial resources, and state and federal aids and grants have been committed to the redevelopment of the city's latest significant piece of municipal land on Lake, Mi on Lake Michigan's western shores. The Blue Harbor Resort is a critical anchor tenant that will help trigger further development on the remaining 20 acres of the site, create 250 new jobs for local residents, substantially increase local and state tax revenues, and add tourism revenue throughout the area. Already we have received hundreds of inquiries from businesses who are interested in developing on the remaining rice property. Once what was thought unimaginable, this development will secure Sheboygan as a year-round tourist destination. I believe just the knowledge of this new facility has played a part in Sheboygan's surge from the 14th to the 9th largest tourism dollar generating county in Wisconsin. Along with the hard work and vision of past city leaders who built the marina, developed a riverfront and lakefront, and revitalized A Street, we are proudly showing that Sheboygan works. Over the past year, hundreds of workers in various construction trades have been employed and working because of the Blue Harbor Project. Once an abandoned brownfield, the South Pier District now boasts a $54 million development project with guaranteed tax increments, which will benefit our community long into the future. While we face challenges on a daily basis, we also must look to our community's future. Sheboygan works not only to preserve its past and make each day the best it can be, we also work to provide a better future for our families. Over the past seven years, we have added 500 million in private sector growth in our community. Growth provides opportunity for our residents, diversifies our local economy, and secures the future. The most important results of a growing community is that it ensures jobs for our citizens to take pride in, provide for their families, and to strengthen the quality of life. Yes, Sheboygan works and will continue to work for its citizens. In keeping with the past council tradition, I would now like to call upon our new council president, Alderman Warner, and committee to hold chairman, Alderman Berg, to share with us their views for the upcoming year. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. Good evening. It truly is an honor to stand before you this evening. Yes, too far away from the mic. It truly is an honor to stand before you this evening. To Sheboygan, her citizens, Mayor Schramm, the Common Council, city staff and employees, I say thank you. Thank you for this privilege, this opportunity to serve you, and for placing your trust in me as your council president. A special thanks to Pastor Alan Kretschmer of St. Paul's Lutheran Church for his invocation this evening. I don't see if Pastor Kretschmer is here. I think he had a goal. He's a very busy man. I'd also like to say to our colleague, Alderman Stefan, that our prayers are with you and your family this evening and throughout this time of mourning. My view has always been that Sheboygan is the greatest city in Wisconsin. We have a lot to be proud of. Our people and our business community are honest and strong. Our city is full of life and is moving forward to her future. I believe it is the duty and obligation of the Common Council to do all it can to help maintain the quality of life in Sheboygan at a reasonable cost to the taxpayer. With teamwork and dedication of everyone last year, we were able to hold the tax levy to virtu virtually no increase. That was extremely difficult, especially with the cutback in state aids. We will need that same teamwork and dedication from everyone in the coming year to meet the demands of our next budget cycle. We as a council will have many challenges ahead. Our belief that through teamwork, I believe that through teamwork, we will succeed in moving Sheboygan forward. By working together, studying the facts, debating the issues that come before us, we will succeed. Teamwork on a council is important. 
It does not mean going along with the crowd. It does not mean agreeing to everything. It does mean working, studying, debating, and compromising in the decisions that we make. Teamwork means a common goal of doing what is right for Sheboygan, not for oneself. We have several new faces on the Common Council this year, and we welcome them aboard as members of our team to work for Sheboygan's future. Alderperson Serta, Alderperson Peterson, and Alderperson Segal, welcome. As new council members, you will have many questions and will have to study a lot of information on the issues that come before you. Your greatest resource for information will likely be the city staff. Make sure you keep your phone number, their phone numbers handy and their email addresses in your address book <coughs> because you're going to need them. Part of their job is to provide you with information that you need to make sound decisions. And it is their job and they take pride in the work they do and they will be glad to help you. I need to say a little more on the upcoming budget, however, since I think what's happened over the past year, that is probably going to be a primary goal this year. The budget challenges that we face for the coming year will be more difficult than last year. The state is already readying its eraser and will likely pick our pockets again. By withholding more of the money that we send to Madison, you see, they think the money we send them is theirs, but it's not, it's ours. And I think they are wrong. Last year, Madison pointed their fingers at us and said we were the problem. Well, they kept more of our money in Madison because of their fiscal irresponsibility. It is likely we will be blamed again. It doesn't matter that Madison increased our vehicle registration fee by $9 per vehicle. It doesn't matter that gas taxes go up even without a vote. How convenient that is. I did not see a decrease in my state income tax. I did not see a de decrease in my sales tax or any other state tax. Yet you can rest assured they will blame us again and likely return even less of our tax dollars to Sheboygan. The budget will be a major challenge. And as a team, it will, we will work to solve it. The city is very fortunate to have an excellent management staff, great employees willing to work together as a team to meet the challenges we face, and I know we will succeed. On the horizon, we have many things to consider. The building of a new police station is one of our critical infrastructure needs, and we must continue the work that has been done to make this a reality. A new Southside fire station is also a very important need. The citizens on Sheboygan's far south side should not have their lives and property at a lower priority than the rest of the city. We must ensure that our police and fire departments have the resources they need to do their job safely and effectively, including the necessary personnel and equipment. Our city, its citizens, and its visitors deserve no less. With the reconstruction of South Business <coughs> Drive, we have, we have completed a major project linking north and south sides from one end of the city to the other. The reconstruction of Michigan Avenue will bring new life and business expansion to that area as it has done on Indiana Avenue. Our Department of Public Works has done just that, worked. Worked very hard to maintain our city's infrastructure, our parks and streets, with reductions in budgets plaguing them as well as all of our departments. It always amazes me how much they actually get done. Each and every city department has given up their best and has given us their best in this past year, not only working harder and smarter, but in their dedication to the city's residents to provide the best service possible. We have great employees, great citizens, and a great future is in store for Sheboygan. Perhaps the biggest project in the city's history, that jewel on Lake Michigan, which the mayor alluded to, the Blue Harbor Resort and Conference Center, along with its condominiums and future development, will potential will not only provide jobs, but increase the tax base of, of our city substantially. Where else but Sheboygan can you see such dynamic growth in the face of adversity? I cannot think of any place. Acuity's expansion project is well underway, adding value and good jobs to our city. With Blue Harbor, Washington Square, Northgate, and soon the possible <coughs> Walmart Superstore, we are a city on the move, and the rest will have to try to catch up. These initiatives, some already started, some in the planning stages, 
and others that are not yet defined will be on our table in the coming year. We as a council, through teamwork, will meet the challenges ahead. Working together with our excellent city staff and employees, our business community, and citizens, we will succeed. Sheboygan is not asleep at the, at the wheel. Thanks to Mayor Schramm, whose leadership and vision have kept us focused in an active and participating common council, working with our citizens, our business community, Sheboygan is moving forward. As with any change, it does not go without challenge and challenges we have had. Yet, working together as a team, we have and we will meet the future and all it has to offer. With teamwork, we will succeed. And I thank you all for being here tonight. I thank God, I thank Sheboygan, and to my wife, Diane, I thank her for all her patience with all the time I spend doing this great job. And I would also like to remind the Common Council, I've already alerted his staff, that there will be a reception at the Elks Club this Friday the 23rd from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, hors d'oeuvres and beer and soda and a cash bar and you, are all, you and your guest or spouse are all welcome. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. I'm not much of a speaker. I watched this on television for so many years and now here I'm standing here. But first of all, I'd like to thank the council for your support and your confidence. The past year we had a lot of critical issues that came up. We had a lot of controversy. But after all was said and done, most issues turned out to be for the best interests of the taxpayers. In the next year, I ask all of you fellow council members to help assist me in bringing in good ideas that we can discuss and make perfectly clear from start to finish that the citizens know what we're, what we're doing in here. I will ask department heads to come in and explain their department functions so the taxpayers have a clear picture of this, the way the city government is operating. Also, I ask the public if they have any questions that they want the committee to hold to discuss on television, to please call me or their older person, and I will try to get the proper people to clarify whatever questions they have. In the past, we have had many good programs, and I hope next year, with all your help, we can have many, many more. The year ahead is going to be very exciting with Blue Harbor, the PGA, and all other usual summer events. Let's all work hard to make these events very successful. When visitors see what this city can do, you can bet they'll be returning for other visits. So once again, I thank all of you and hope we can all work together to keep our city going in the right direction. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Warner, Alderman Berg. I also would like to congratulate Alderman Manny, Perez, Berg, Stefan, and Vanderweel on their re-election. And I also like to welcome Alderperson Peterson, Sigali, and Serta to our council. Sheboygan works. Our work is successful when we have a vision for our future and when we love our community, our hometown. The journey we begin today to continue to build a better community will require hard work, it will be challenging, and it will take courage since at times you may make unpopular decisions. Sheboygan works when positive ideas are put forth and when we unite in what we can and should strive for. Sheboygan works because its most important resource, its people, have pride in this city. We will work hard. 
we will succeed. Sheboygan works for all those willing to work towards safer neighborhoods, stronger families, and a brighter future. Sheboygan works for all of us. It's still about you, always about us, always. Thank you, God bless you, and have a good evening. Okay, Steve Mears appointments. The first list is dated today to the honorable members of the Common Council. I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration, and these are the standing committees. Uh, Finance, Alderman James Groff, Chairman, Alderman Stefan, Vice Chairman, Alderman Berg, Manny, and Montemeyer, Public Protection and Safety Committee, Alderman Michael Warner, Chairman, Alderman Vanderweel, Vice Chairman, Alderman Wangaman, Rinfleisch, and Serta. Public Works Committee, Alderman Dennis Bauman, Chairman, Alderman Berg, Vice Chairman, Alderman Rinfleisch, Peterson, and Sigali. Salary and Grievances Committee, Alderman Don Van Akron, Chairman, Alderman Wangaman, Vice Chairman, Alderman Perez, Montemeyer, and Peterson. Law and Licensing Committee, Alderman Anthony Bonet, Chairman, Alderman Manny, Vice Chairman, Alderman Perez, Vanderweel, and Serta. Signed by the Mayor. Okay, so it's a little light over. Um, and another letter dated today. These are uh, appointments to fill uh, some vacancies. Eldon Berg to be considered for appointment to the Board of Review to fill the unexpired term of Monroe Gerke, whose term expires 4-30-2007. David Gass to be considered for appointment to the Civil Service Commission to fill the unexpired term of Angela Sukevich, whose term expires April 30, 2005. Alderman Richard Manny to be considered for appointment to the Library Board to fill the unexpired term of Betty Moody, whose term expires April 30, 2006. Signed by the Mayor. We'll lay over. And then finally is the list of uh, other committee appointments and commissions, boards, and so forth. Um, it's a list of eight pages. I believe all the aldermen have copies in front of them. And uh, at least unless the council is so inclined, uh, the tradition has been not to read all of those uh, verbatim. I'd be happy to do it if you want to. Not unless you want to be here until midnight. <laughs> that also is uh, submitted today's date by the mayor. And those will lie over. Thank you, Steve. Okay, communications and petitions, Pat? To be referred. To be referred. All right. 1-1 one, one through 1-8 to be referred. 1 9 will lie over. No, 1 9 is withdrawn. 1 9 is withdrawn. Okay. 1 10, resolution by Alderman Wangaman is asserted directing a public hearing to rezone property located at 1410, 1418, and 1422 South 11th Street. Alderman Wangaman? Oh, let's see, I gotta dig that one out here. I make a motion that this resolution uh, be put up on this passage. Move to second a resolution be put up on this passage under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 111 to be referred. 112 and 13 to be referred. Other matters? 
114 is an RO by the city clerk submitting communications from Jeff Zank of Z-Spot, Espresso, and Coffee requesting permission to encroach upon portions of Indiana Avenue for a new awning and outdoor seating. That will go to Planning Commission. 115 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication received by the mayor from Anthony Bonet, local coordinator cha chairperson for the Rockets for Schools, requesting closure of various streets and the temporary closing of both, both the north and south piers during the 2004 Rockets for Schools. Public protection and safety. 116 is a resolution requesting the mayor to reactivate various special committees for the 2004-2005 council year. That can be passed. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion the resolution be put upon its passage. Move to the second the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 117 is a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to participate in the DOT road salt purchase program. And that will go to Public Works. Moved and seconded to adjourn. There's no other discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.